Now this pretty dusty gaming PC has featured on the channel before. It is my at-home gaming system. And for the last month, it's had an Intel Arc GPU in it. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss if it was actually like living with a bipolar honey badger. I.e. not pleasant. But before not pleasant, today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Be Quiet and their new FX series of products, which is basically like their amazing standard products, but with RGB. Be Quiet has RGB-ified their Pure Rock 2 air coolers, Pure Loop 2 AIOs, and Pure Base 500 cases. And considering that they use non-proprietary RGB connectors, that should minimize the RGB struggle. So check the link in the video description if you want some Be Quiet RGB. Thanks Be Quiet for sponsoring today's video. Almost dropped that, holy crap. And as you can tell from the bits of dust sediment, the graphics card's been in here a while. Now before we get into the trials and tribulations of Intel GPU ownership, just a little bit of context so that you get where this video is coming from. Uh, now this system is used like 98% for gaming. I do occasionally edit thumbnails and stuff on it, but it's, it's a recreational system. And for the month, I didn't exhaustively test every use case imaginable. I just used the system for the things that I'd normally use it, just with an Intel A770 in it as opposed to the RTX 3080 that's normally in it. Games wise, I primarily play Dota 2, which is about as easy to run as from here to that door. But over the last month, I did play some other games on it as well. I tried some Escape from Tarkov on it. I also did a bunch of Stalker Gamma, which is a relatively jankily modded version of an old video game. And as you can tell from this footage, I filmed on a 70s camcorder I found in a dumpster. Trying to run that on an ARC GPU went about as terribly as you'd expect, but more on that later. But other than that, I also played some Borderlands on it, uh, The Forest I played recently on it as well, some Shipbreaker, and even some Escape from Tarkov, which I may have mentioned already. And all of this gaming was done on a 34-inch ultra-wide display, so quite a chunky resolution for this GPU to drive. And after spending a month playing, you know, various stuff on it, it was fine. Uh, although, I did have a couple of problems, which I think we should discuss now. As of driver this obscene number, I couldn't get screen capturing to reliably work on the Intel Arc GPU, which is pretty annoying considering that on both Nvidia and AMD GPUs, you just press a button and it kind of happens. Now in terms of the screen capture, maybe I'm too stupid to figure it out, and that's the problem, which is likely, but it's not like I'm trying to solve M-theory with it, so I feel like it shouldn't be that complicated. If it requires an IQ test for me to get screen capture working with the software, it's not user-friendly enough. Now under Studio, there's a whole capture size menu that lets you set all of the parameters of the capturing, you know, the resolution, frame rate, Kodak, bit rate, all of that stuff. Uh, but there's no place for you to set a hotkey to start the capture, which doesn't make any sense. Like you can press the start button here and then like 50% of the time it actually does a screen capture, but they can't expect me to alt tab out of the thing that I'm doing to press a button in the software, alt tab back in, finish the thing that I wanted to record and then alt tab out again to stop the thing. That's just, that's just not acceptable. <laughs> now under app preferences, there is a hotkey sub menu that only lets you set a hotkey for highlights not for screen capturing. Like it's such a weird problem. They put all this effort into a fancy capture facility and then forgot to put in a way for you to turn it on. Like at a point, I started just using random combinations of alt and other key, hoping that I just find a random combination that starts it, but I, I couldn't. I even Googled it and couldn't find a combination for it. But th this is an older driver version and there has been an update in the meantime. So let's update the drivers and see if maybe that fixes it. Now I decided to to purge the old drivers with napalm in case there was some kind of latent setting issue before installing the new fresh drivers. But the new drivers didn't seem to change anything in terms of the screen capture. Nope, that didn't fix it either, which I know is just gonna lead to some super patronizing comment down below about how obvious it is. All you need to do is this easy 
nine step process, which usually doesn't end up working anyway, but then they'll keep going about how shocked they are that somebody with a tech channel of my size can't figure it out. But that's the point. It's screen capture. It shouldn't require figuring out. It should just work. <laughs> But anyway, now that my blood pressure is several PSI higher than before, let's get into the second problem I had. Now I want to preface all of this by saying that struggling to run Stalker Gamma is a bit of a niche complaint because it's a very heavily modded version of a pretty janky old game and sometimes its performance seems more dependent on lunar cycle than the hardware that it's running on. Even with the 3080 in the system, the game's performance was sporadic. But when I dropped in the Arc GPU, it dropped from an average of about 100 frames per second down to sometimes in the mid 20s if it was raining, which is really not a great experience. But then I remembered a bunch of you mentioned to just use the DXVK fix to get better gaming performance with older games and Intel Arc GPUs, which is a fix that I think has actually been natively added to the latest Intel drivers. Uh, but we'll try those out a little bit later. But anyway, before those drivers, I just couldn't get the community made DXVK fix working for Stalker Gamma because they're like source files that you have to go and download off of GitHub. And then because Stalker Gamma is like 300 mods over multiple install locations, it's very difficult to figure out where the DXVK source files need to go to get them to work. And then none of them worked and it ended up with me just eventually breaking the game install and having to go through the very lengthy process to reinstall Stalker Gamma. And then I just rage quit on it and decided to live with the terrible gaming performance. But what about those drivers I just mentioned? Let's give those a try and see if they fix the performance. So I'm gonna do a quick benchmark here in a, in a very specific bit that I saved so that we can update the drivers and see if it's actually helped with the performance. Now bear in mind, this is running at 1080p, whereas I was gaming using 3440 by 1440p before. As you can see, resolution doesn't really impact it much. We're getting about the same frame rate that I was getting with uh, the, the ultra wide. And you can see the GPU isn't really doing anything. So let's do some benchmarking and then see if we can get more than 20% GPU utilization with the new driver. Holy crap, that is insane. Look at that frame rate and that GPU utilization as well. That is a huge difference. The performance improvement was so big, in fact, I thought it was a little bit fishy. So I went and reinstalled the older drivers, but the performance improvement remained. And I've even gone as far as turning resize bar off to see if that made any difference, but that this is with resize bar off and we're getting a much better performance. So despite the fact that I DDU wiped the newer drivers off to install the old ones on without being connected to the internet, it's still giving us the performance benefit. What makes it even weirder is earlier today, I got the worst performance I've ever gotten from Stalker Gamma with the new drivers. I then just restarted the system and it fixed it. I briefly thought maybe it had something to do with the system needing to restart for resolutions to apply. But then when I set the game to 4K, it ran better than the initial terrible performance. So I have no idea what to make of these results. And quite frankly, I'm not even sure it's the Arc GPU's fault. So I probably didn't need to include all of this in this video, but it was like the only interesting thing that happened over my time with the Arc GPU. So <laughs> I had to put it in. Now I know up until this point, the whole video has just been me complaining about the Arc GPU, but those were two pretty minor niche complaints. Although the screen capture really is very broken. Rarely, if ever, does it actually capture any footage, even if you manually press the record button in the software like some kind of animal. And the reason I brought those up over the course of the video was because honestly, most of the time I didn't even realize it was in the system. I just came home, tried to play games on it, and games just kind of happened. But let's face it, games working on a graphics card is very much a minimum requirement. So 
yeah, I don't know how much that information is worth to you. Um, I think Linus is also doing one of these month-long periods with, with this graphics card, and I'm sure he'll have a lot more varied tests and stuff with his graphics card, but for like pretty basic gaming, it met the minimum requirement of mostly working. So yes, thank you for watching, and until the next video, bye-bye.